Hello, hello. Welcome back. This is Steel Wine in the Morning. Thank you for staying with us. Uh, we have arrived to that conversation I was telling you about of re the Resilient Woman. This is an organization founded by an incredible woman who has joined us today who goes by the name Lucy Karambo. She'll be taking us through the journey of the Resilient Woman, uh, the, the Resilient Woman. Uh, they basically help women who are in prison to transition into the society and their children, of course. So, Lucy, Karibu Busana. Thank you so much for having me, Stephanie. Glad to have you with us. Thank you. So, talk to us. Tell us first who you are and then you can introduce a resilient woman. Mm, my name is Lucy. Mm -hmm. Lucy Karambu. I'm born and brought up in Meru. Um, I am a Christian. I mm. love the Lord very passionate about uh, social healing, mm -hmm. um, uh, restorative justice, uh, and trauma management. Because I think that um, we are living in a time when where mm. there are a lot of mental issues that are affecting people, and we need healing, uh, not just um, the healing of the body, but the healing of so, you know, the mind and the soul. So I believe uh, in that. Right. Yes. So tell us about Resilient Woman and uh, your role there and what you do, uh, what it is about. Yes, yeah, so Resilient Woman um, is an organization that is um, mandated with, uh, um, with the, as a mandate of supporting women that are transitioning prison mm -hmm. um, through trauma management, through mm -hmm. mentorship. And then um, to complete the support to these women that are transitioning prison, we also support children, their children with, with education. And that's children that are affected by imprisonment, who, mm -hmm. whose parents have been to prison. And then also children who are affected by, uh, who are living in difficult circumstances. Um, and a resilient woman, therefore, uh, does the work of easing the, the burden of transitioning or mm. entry of the women when they, they, are, they are getting back to the community because there's a lot of uh, stigma, there's a lot of uh, discrimination, there's a lot of isolation. So mm -hmm. we do the, we, we, we receive them, we accept them, we want to love them, we want to be practical in, you know, demonstrating the love of Christ to these women so that it becomes easy for them to go back to right. the community, yes. Okay, doing great stuff. So Thank tell, you. why the name Resilient Woman? Why woman? And why is resilient again? Oh, wow. Um, resilient. Um, because our all intention in, in, in supporting this woman, mm -hmm. you know, because our focus is we want to uh, ensure that we have we've supported this woman the, the our our total um our end game is to ensure that they are resilient they are able to bounce back mm -hmm. in the face of the experiences that they have they have had mm -hmm. they are able to develop uh, social networks they are able to resettle back they are able to to get back and begin their life so mm -hmm. our aim is to build somebody that is resilient as we journey with them through trauma management training through mentorship through supporting their children mm -hmm. so this is all that we want to see with this woman that we are supporting all right yes and why did you decide uh you are supporting women did you see a gap or why why women why not men or why not both of them well both men and women are supported but are affected by imprisonment mm -hmm. and um we think that women have a bigger burden. Both men and women are affected, but women have a bigger burden. Awesome. And many times when women leave prison, they are, they are getting back and getting settled is actually more difficult than for the, for the, for the men. How so? Because um, many times a woman will get into prison, when they come back, their husband has gotten married. Uh -huh. the, whatever they had is taken away, you know? Mm -hmm. And so, um, but for a man, it's easier for them to settle back when yeah. they come out. Uh, uh, as much as they are dealing with their emotional issues, you know, that stigma and all, mm -hmm. but 
for the for getting back and getting settled and reconnecting with the with the community and the families it's easier it's, for them. It's, it's easier for them. Okay. And more difficult for the ladies, for the women, yes. All right. Before yeah. we get into what you do, we want to know the story behind Resilient Woman. How did you come up with it? What, what inspired you to Resilient Woman? I would say that, um, that understanding of restorative justice, mm -hmm. which for me is such a practical way of demonstrating the love of Christ, I would say uh, learning about restorative justice met my passion, my, my belief as a person. Um, it really resonated with my experience as a person in the journey of life. Um, and so it was like now um, getting to learn about the restorative, the restorative justice really triggered everything or just brought me to saying this is exactly what it, what it is I would want to do mm -hmm. because um, restorative justice is is so it's a relational approach it brings two people uh, warring parties parties together it uh, rebuilds relationships it uh, it uh, says let's talk Mm, you know, yeah. Let's not let's not uh, let's not create war. As much as there is, uh, there is. I've committed an offense against you, um, uh, Stephanie. Mm -hmm. Um, and probably let's say it's it's a rape case or a murder case. And there are options of you know the person going to prison. We're saying after all this is done relationships are important because we want to break the cycle of of, of of violence we want we don't want our children the children of the two parties that we're dealing with to um continue this cycle to, to continue eating each, each other and wanting to 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 be violent against each other we want to break that by saying let's let's see how can we mend this mm -hmm. is there anything that i can do as person that offended you to to correct this mm -hmm. and sometimes it's difficult but it is possible and so for me that was really I just thought this is a practical way of really demonstrating the love of Christ yeah. as opposed to retributive justice mm -hmm. because retributive justice does nothing about relationships when people come out of prison they want to take revenge and what happens is the cycle, the cycle continues. continues to replay, yes. Mm -hmm. And you've said that um, it resonated with you know, your experiences. So do you have a particular experience or maybe your j life journey that uh, particularly resonated with you know, restoration justice? Understanding the effect that, um, that imprisonment has on children, for me. Mm -hmm. And um, having grown up with a grandmother, because my parents separated when I was very, very young, mm -hmm. actually before I went to school. And the impact that that has on the children, you know, it is, it is, I, we cannot, we cannot even, uh, what, we cannot even quantify mm -hmm. the, the impact, the separation, separation of children from the their parents. parents as, and especially when the parents go to prison. Mm -hmm. For me, that was, something that I, I, I that, that really came really close home because being away from my 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 mom and my dad and growing up because oh, my mom went to a, to a different marriage and I was left with my grandmother and good um, um, it was good that my uncle mm -hmm. take responsibility took responsibility for our education but then being away from my mom Mm -hmm. And experiencing that, you know, separation and lack of just being with my mom and my dad. As I may not have faced the kind of stigma that children who are, of, who are affected by, by incarceration mm -hmm. face. Yeah. But for me, that, that is something that I, I, I just said, it's something that needs attention mm -hmm. so that when um, um, parents are supported through their journey of reintegration mm -hmm. they, they are, they are, their parents their children are taken care of wow. yes because uh, children will, will, will just get scattered they they have no one to really to be accountable to mm -hmm. some go to the street some are, you know some refuse to go to school because 
you know, my mom is in prison. Yeah. So there's no sense in going to school. So the impact on children is great. And that for me, um, really, really, touched it's, you. yes, it, it touched me, yes. Mm -hmm. So can you say maybe uh, some of the experiences, the difficult experiences that people, you know, experience in their lives actually, you know, lead to something. Maybe like in your case, it led to, you know, you finding your purpose, maybe if I yes. can call this your purpose. Yes. So it's at, at the end of the day, it's uh, it will make sense whatever someone is going through. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So um, uh, you would want me to name an exam, uh, an ex an experience that would lead to uh, a purpose? Yes, you can. Um, uh, I think there are many experiences. For me, it was that um, childhood experience that was very traumatizing. Um, others would be loss, yeah? Mm -hmm. And for me, it was actually also a loss of a relationship with my parents. But there are that, those others who would, would be, have loss of, of parents, mm -hmm. that would lead them to just being able to, it's, it, 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 it's, I think the, the, the journey of life gets them um, to discover something about themselves, but also loss of a, of, of, of a child, you know? Mm -hmm even loss of a marriage, you know. Um, those are examples of, thing, of, of experiences that would have, and at a point they get us to discover the bigger purpose. Mm -hmm. And at the time that we are really going through it, mm -hmm. it doesn't make it. sense. Yeah. It's, 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 it's painful, mm -hmm. yes. All right, yeah. so now tell us how you started uh, a Resilient Woman which year did it start? How did it start to where it is now? Take us through that journey. Yes, yeah, so um, uh, I did a course in uh, conflict resolution and peace studies, mm -hmm. and that was my first encounter with restorative justice. This uh, approach that I'm so, so passionate about. Mm -hmm. um, and that was uh, around actually more than 10 years ago. Um, and when I learned about it, I actually it was so clear I would want to do something about, I would want to do something with restorative justice. Mm -hmm. And so in 2013, I started writing down what it is that I wanted to do. Mm -hmm. So you put and down I, your vision. Yes, I started writing down and I actually I shared with, with, um, with one of the women leaders in Nairobi, who I, it's not important to name, mm -hmm. because I thought this person can actually guide me to navigate the process, you know, this is what I'm thinking, you know, I'm feeling so excited about it. Uh -huh. And immediately, when I wrote the email, they came back to me asking, yeah, so how can, can you tell me more so that I can help? Then I gave more information, and they disappeared. Wow. But anyway, um, so after that, I now got the opportunity in 2014, 2013, late 2014, I got the opportunity to visit a prison. It started with Langata Women's Prison. Mm -hmm. And for me, I wanted to understand the issues. And like I mentioned a little earlier in our conversation, what I thought was the need was, I thought I can give what I have. I have yeah. a background in BCOM. So... Yeah. Business uh -huh. skills, maybe for the women, but then visiting prison, um, attending discharge boards, attending um, stakeholder meetings at the prison, you know, having meetings with the women uh, when they have uh, meetings with their children, it just, it just got so clear to me that what they need is actually not business skills. <laughs> what did they need? They needed um, emotional stability. Mm -hmm. Yes, because they are through their journeys of, uh, you know, going to prison and being in prison, they were exposed to a ve uh, 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 potentially traumatizing experiences. The experiences were potentially traumatizing. Mm -hmm. And so um, even getting to, to hear about the, the, their stories just made it clear that what we need is actually trauma management training. And so um, I did a number, uh, on a number of visits, assessment, you know, just getting to, 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 to talk to the women when the opportunity was there, hearing what the officers are saying, mm -hmm. you know. And um, we now, um, uh, I now got to speak to, to like-minded people in my circle. Most yeah. of them were my schoolmates, others who volunteered with them. Um, and I told them this is what is going through my mind. 
I would want to do this. And to be honest, they, 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 they were not very clear what it is I'm talking about. Yeah. But with time, they were able to, to understand that. And in 2014, we formed the organization Resilient Woman mm -hmm. that got registered in 2016. 2016? Yes, 2016. Okay, but you started in 2014? We started in 2014, yes. Ah, in right. 2016, the process of registration went, went through. Mm -hmm. Yes. So uh, you said that, you know, when you go to hear the stories, you realize that these women, it, it was trauma that led to them getting into prison. So what sort of trauma? Is it a case for many women of, uh, inside there or, you know, a minor, you know, a, not the majority, just the minority? And uh, what sort of trauma do they go through that lead them to do, you know, yeah. atrocities? So um, uh, I mentioned that um, it was, we realized that women had been exposed to potentially traumatizing experiences. And some of the experiences, even after having our very initial training with the women in prison, is some women would say, I grew up without my mother. Mm -hmm. and, and and so I I joined some you know bad company. Mm -hmm. Others um, and the experiences of uh, wanting to go abroad, uh, looking for a passport, getting a fake, um, a not oh. honest um, an agent that is not honest, and getting a, a a passport that is that is fake, and you know just realizing at the airport that i actually don't have the the, the passport is not is not um uh, genuine and uh -huh. getting into prison but um out of actually um um maybe 75 percent so to say they had experiences in childhood mm -hmm. they had experiences in childhood as much as we have others who had committed crimes of, of murder Others, they had done drugs, but there was a linkage between their experiences, that, the experiences that led them to prison mm -hmm. and childhood um, experiences or trauma. Okay. Yes. So the training that you did uh, back then, I, I understand that now you don't do the training in prison, you do it after that from prison. Yes. So the training you did in prison, how did you go about it? And what did you, what came out of the training? Oh. Uh, well, um, we have done trainings uh, in prison. Uh, in uh, We've done trainings in Meru. We've done trainings in Kericho. We have done trainings in um, um, Langata, Maximum Prison, mm -hmm. uh, for the women. And what came out of the, pre, of the, of the training is it, it is an understanding, or, um, an understanding of the issues that women go through. Mm -hmm. Not just during um, uh, in, during imprisonment, but before imprisonment, and the kind of of impact that has. And for us, it was also an opportunity. Um, having carrying out the the training in prison, it was an opportunity to also get to see the need of having a supportive staff in the prison so that uh, women are not getting another an, an additional layer of, of of trauma by the way they are being handled you know mm -hmm. the, the experiences they have inside prison and um even the 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 the, 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 the handling of their children who are with them in the in the prison and so trauma-informed care for us is something that came very very clear mm -hmm. that there is need for trauma-informed care a support for the the, the support staff in in prison because uh, sometimes it is maybe how they, they, they interact with them without knowing the experiences that they have had, you know, the, kind, the, the language, so that it is a healing process. Even the, the, it's rehabilitation, but it's also a healing process. Mm -hmm. Yes. So do you talk with the supporting staff in prison to know how to communicate with the prisoners? Yes, we have done one training. We've mm -hmm. done one training in Meru, trauma-informed care training, actually. Mm -hmm. But it, this is really not a one-off thing. It's it, there's need for continuous continuous uh, continuous awareness and and education you know around relationship between uh, staff and and the the, 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 the yeah, prisoners yes, yes. Right. so that there's there's healing that is happening in the process as as they interact mm -hmm. you know as they get out then it, the rehabilitation 
there is rehabilitation, but there is also healing. Mm -hmm. Yes. So tell us the entities, the uh, or the programs that uh, Resilient Woman has. Yeah. So our core program mm -hmm. is uh, trauma management training and mentorship for the women. Okay. And the mentorship happens uh, or is uh, supported by women that have been trained and identified from from the churches. So we train them mm -hmm. uh, to be empathetic, to, to not be judgmental, mm -hmm. to be supportive of the women when they leave prison, to just support them without stigmatizing or discriminating them. Mm -hmm. And then the other program is um, understanding the needs of the women that are uh, coming from prison. And one of the major needs is emotional stability, but the second one is, is income, but also um, Yes, the other one is income. Mm -hmm. And income uh, helps them to be able to support all their needs, including the needs for their children. Yeah. And so we came in to support their children through education. Mm -hmm. And right now we have around 25 children Which who are sponsoring. Yes, uh, sponsored in the program, both in primary and in secondary school. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, and then we have a teens program. Mm -hmm. The teens program was born as a result of a relationship we have with one of the mentees or one of the women that are in the mentorship program and who left prison in 2016. And mm -hmm. uh, in the mentorship, pro in the mentorship uh, program for the teenagers, mm -hmm. we do different life skills uh, programs. Uh, we have done creating positive relationships to help them handle relationships well, sex, sex education, you know, um, uh, appropriate, age appropriate education. Mm -hmm. And then uh, we have done um, uh, a book club to enhance their skills. Mm -hmm. uh, we have done um, a program called Singing to the Lions to help them face their fears and to also help them to um, go out to seek support when there is need and to just understand who the, the, what the resources are in the community in terms of uh, can I speak to a pastor, can I speak to a mm -hmm. chief, mm -hmm. yes. Um, but we also have a program for children yeah. who are in prison with their mothers. Okay. And that one we, so we provide materials for the children, mm -hmm. uh, like clothes, you know, uh, uh, toiletries, soap, um, oil, you know, yeah. All right. So yeah. we'll get into those entities, but, you know, about the mentorship for the women that are in prison. So you did the training uh, when you started initially, uh, yes. the, uh, you know, with the organization. And then currently you don't do the training. So you Inside only, prison, we don't do it. Inside prison, yes. you only do it after, after they're from prison. Yes. So take us through that journey. So now, uh, how do you get them after they're from prison until, you know, yeah, so we, we work in, re, in partnership with the church mm -hmm. because we are not just um, uh, meeting the emotional parts of uh, the, the needs for the women, but also the, also the spiritual part. Mm -hmm. But we also think that it is in the church that we can get people who, are, who have an understanding of the love of Christ and other people still, you know, yeah. would love them. But we think that in the church we can, um, we have people who, who can be more empathetic and, you know, although, like um, I, I mentioned a little earlier, mm -hmm. there's need for training because the suspicion still remains there because of, uh, you, you know, uh, because of the They're fear of not yeah. understanding, you know, yeah. these women. But, you know, these are our brothers and sisters. Mm -hmm. And it could be you, it could be me. You know, why do you think, before you continue, why should, uh, you know, people coming from prison be embraced and supported when they come back to the society? Because they are human. Someone would argue they did wrong, they murdered someone. They did, How? they did wrong, but what do we do when wrong happens? Is mm -hmm. it a wrong and a wrong? And what is the most sustainable thing to do? It is to embrace them. It is to love them. Mm -hmm. It is to help them settle back. And they are remorseful. Some of them have accepted Christ. Mm -hmm. And people do not believe. They just want, they are in, at that point, they are like, you know, I am telling you I have changed. Why don't you give me a chance? Why don't you believe that I have actually changed? Mm -hmm. So they have, they have changed. And some of them have not. But the thing is, what is our role? Especially as a church. Mm -hmm. what, what do we do? We've been called to restore 
for those that need help, we do not want to live with people who do not, I mean, to go to people who do not need help. Our, our mission is to reach out and to embrace them. So they are human beings, they are our brothers and sisters, they need support, and it is with that support that they will actually not go back to prison again. Because some will, mm -hmm. will even commit crimes again and go back to prison because it's easier for That's them in the prison. That's the only place where they are Yeah, you know, embraced they are embraced by their, one of their own. Uh -huh. Yeah. Okay. Yes, yeah, so, and so I was explaining um, about how we get the, the women to, uh, you know, uh, to get to the trainings outside prison. And so work, working with, in partnership with the church, we are taking care of the emotional and the spiritual. Mm -hmm. But the church also, uh, we partner with them to do missions in the church, to reach out to the women and to the children who are in prison with their, with their mothers. Mm -hmm. And at that time, we are telling them, this is who we are. This is resilient woman. Mm. When you come out, please don't be alone. Get in touch with us through the administration at the, at the, uh, the, the, the prison administration. They get in touch with the church and they are linked to the mentors when they, when they leave. And so they become part of the mentorship program in that way. Mm -hmm. Yes, so that's how they, we, we, we get them to be part of the trainings and the mentorship program. So now the mentorship program, you know, after they come out of, of prison, what exactly do you do? Um, oh, the, during the, the mentorship program, we link them up with the women that have been trained who have regular meetings with them. Mm -hmm. um, and first of all, what they do is they visit their families, the mentors, visit the, the families of the mentees, just to understand their needs. Because first of all, they, they come to the locality, like we have a, a mentorship program in Kericho. So mm -hmm. they come, when they come to um, uh, the locality where the mentorship program is, and they are aware that uh, we, uh, we, we run the program there, they reach out. The mentors then visit their families Mm -hmm. to just understand what their needs are and how the mentorship program can be supportive of, of them and to identify what are the needs of the children. Do we have children that were left when the, 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 uh, the mom went to prison? What are they doing? Where are they? Are they going to school? Um, is there any, any, anything that this woman can do um, uh, to... Uh, get back on their feet in terms of income yeah. and their social networks that they can join groups of women mm -hmm. you know so all this is done uh, in the during the mentorship program and by the mentor yeah. so that's the kind of um, uh, thing that happens in the mentorship so what sort of results do you see what impact do you see both in you know after you've trained them and how long is that mentorship and you know tell us the impact of the mentorship and also in their children those that are you know, with them in prison and come out after? Um, the impact is, is huge. Um, uh, right now we have um, 26, 26 women, uh, 26 women and men. Mm -hmm. I, I mentioned that we started with the, with the women. women, but along the way as mentors interact with the community, mm -hmm. they, they came across uh, men. And they have been coming for the mentorship program. And so we have around 26 in total mm -hmm. in the mentorship program. And um, the change is the confidence that the women um, and the men are getting, even as they, 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 get, they um, reintegrate, mm -hmm. because they have been accepted. They have been showed love. Somebody is interested in them, you know? Mm -hmm. They are not... Um, they are not isolate, we're not yeah, isolating them, you know, yeah. because that is a really big need for them because of the stigma, because of the discrimination. So getting them, accepting them, reaching out to them and telling them you can be part of the program, that is one, um, it's, a, it's a stabilizing factor for them. Uh, but we, we, we also have seen the, them begin to join groups mm -hmm. because the, the mentorship program also does education in the community. And so they join groups and become, you know, they have a social network. They are, they, they, they are not alone, you know. Mm -hmm. they, it's not just a mentor and the mentee. 
it is they are they are, they are getting a network of support um, of support mm -hmm. from uh, through groups through the church and their, their desire to really uh, want to be alone or even want to commit a crime to go back to prison it diminishes mm -hmm. yeah so um there's that confidence and the fact that they can also uh, just begin want to do something and support their children because that is a really it's a real need mm -hmm. you know when your child is 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 not uh stable when yeah. they are not taken with their when they are they are they are suffering you mm -hmm. also do not you you you're emotionally affected you're psychologically affected yeah yes okay mm. uh, i read somewhere you say intimacy with the inmates frees me yeah <laughs> oh, yeah it's it just to say that loving them and accepting them mm -hmm. It's it's all liberating for me because that's a that's a practical love of Christ. Okay. Yes, it is just getting to understand their needs. You know, it is um, getting to know this is a human being, mm -hmm. just like me. It could be my sister, it could be my brother. Because getting into prison, mm -hmm. sometimes you are caught up in circumstances. Just getting to understand this person and Helping them, them through their journey and and reconnect with the community, reconnect with the, with the, with, with their families, mm -hmm. begin their life back, uh, you know, after prison. Mm -hmm. It's for me, it's a success. Wow. Yes. All right. What fuels your? Pa you, you speak with so much passion. You know, what what keeps you going even when you know in the amidst difficulty when there are hardships? Because I know that it's not all rosy. Yeah. Uh, doing this. So what are some of the challenges and what keeps you going? What fuels your passion? Yeah, I think uh, that uh, some of the challenges, um, you know, you can't save the world mm -hmm. because resources are not there. Sometimes, you know, people will, you, you have, uh, you know, um, because one of the things that we have, our COF program, like I said, is trauma management training, and uh, mentorship and uh, support mm. to take care of the emotional stability. But we have not been able to take care of the income aspect as much as we need. Mm. And that is a, a very a major part of, of, of the life of the women. Mm -hmm. And so women will, will want to, um, uh, you, uh, to, to start businesses, you know, but we've not been able to do that as, as much as we would we because of the, 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 the limitations in, in, uh, in, in resources. But we also have um, mm. many women that are, have children that need support. We can't get all the children right now in the program, mm. in the sponsorship program, because again, we are, we are not as, um, as resources as we, we should be. So okay. those are the, some of the, the challenges. Mm. Yeah, but I mean, you do w what you have, what you can with what, what you, you have. have. Yes, right. so you can't wait to have all the resources in the world. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, so mm -hmm. the fact that you can't do everything sometimes is stressing. It feels like I wish I, I had all the resources in the world yeah. to be able to, to do this. Uh, what make, gives, uh, keeps me going? Yeah. I think I, I, think I love, I love um, uh, people. Mm -hmm. I love to see people thrive. I like to see people, you know, exert relationships. I, I love to see people just being in terms with each other. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and for and me, it. growing, getting the women to grow and to be happy, mm -hmm. even when we meet, it's such an exciting that thing. So they are not stressed about where they are coming from. Mm -hmm. They are happy and they are, they are getting back to their feet. So it. It's, it's exciting for me to just see them get back to their feet. All right. You're doing great stuff. We celebrate you totally. Thank you so much. So as we so come much, to Stephanie. a close, welcome. Yeah. As we come to a close, uh, tell us, tell people, you can talk to the camera, tell us how we can support your mission, you can support your organization. I know there's uh, an upcoming uh, you know, event you're doing on menstrual hygiene. Uh, tell us how we can support you and how we can get you on your social platforms. That's your camera. Um, uh, yes. So um, you can support by um, creating awareness mm -hmm. and educating the uh, people um, about the needs of people who are affected by imprisonment. That is a main, main 
an important thing that you can help us with because there is a lot of stigma there's a lot of discrimination there is a lot of lack of support for the women and men when they are getting back um, uh, to the community after prison and so you can educate people let the, let people know that um, this person could be your brother it could be your sister it could be anyone and what it is that, what would you do to your brother or your sister would you do the same uh, to mm -hmm. somebody else outside the circle of your family um uh, then uh, n uh, number two you can also help us by volunteering your skills yeah volunteering your skills in our program we have programs in uh, uh, mentorship for the for the for the teenagers there are different activities that we do so you can support that um you can also support by uh, we have an upcoming event uh, on 28th of May. It is Menstrual Hygiene Day. And the theme is making menstruation um, a normal fact of, of facts of life by 2030. That is, the, that, that is the, 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 the theme. And in this, it is not just giving sanitary pads, which you can give, but it is bringing on board boys and other people because we want to create allies we don't want to create to have people who shame the girls when mm. they, when they are in awkward situations we want to create allies we want to educate people around girls to be able to support them during their menstruation uh, times yeah so you can support with the uh, um uh, uh providing the uh, you know uh, sanitary pads by giving uh, you can visit our um, our uh, website www.resilientwomanofafrica.org um, resilient uh, woman of africa on facebook yes and uh, you can also write to us resilient woman thrive at gmail.com right. yeah in that way you will be able to reach us Thank you very much, Lucy. We are glad to have you. We support you. Keep doing what you do. Thank you so much. That really, really appreciate it. Welcome. That has been Lucy Karambo, founding director of Resilient Woman. You have had it all. We celebrate such women. Let's take a short break. We'll be back with the next interview.